decades after the United Nations Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, more than 130 world leaders will gather in the same Brazilian city on June 20th for the Rio Plus 20 Summit. The UN organized a conference will offer them an opportunity to renew their political will to make the world more sustainable for future generations. In an exclusive interview with China Daily, Sha Zukang, Secretary General for the 2012 UN Conference on Sustainable Development, set high expectations for Rio Plus 20. He called it a historic opportunity, one that cannot be missed if the world hopes to address the spate of sustainable development challenges it's facing. UN is a place where we have conferences practically every day. The Rio Plus 20, as Sergio Ban Ki-moon has said, is a once in a generation opportunity. This is a conference which should have the potential to decide the future of the mankind. And as we all know, today the development is unsustainable. After 20 years, the world, instead of being more sustainable, it has become more unsustainable. And we should not miss the opportunity. In that sense, the Rio Plus 20 has its own historical importance. Rio Plus 20 is the biggest UN conference in years, with an estimated 50,000 people from 190 countries, more than 100 heads of state and government, along with thousands of participants from the UN and its agencies, civil society and the private sector attending from June 20th to 22nd. It must be a place where decisions on the future of climate are made for the next 10 or 20 years. It can be, uh, cannot be under the talk shop. So therefore, world leaders need to adopt an ambitious and yet, of course, practical outcome that equals the magnitude of today's challenges. The difference between this session or this conference and the previous one is that we have, you know, let the nine major groups, you know, like NGOs, civil society, science and technology, community, you know, farmers, you know, women, indigenous people, you know, workers and the children and youth, all those so-called major groups and the business and the industry, you know, they are going to, they from the very beginning, as a matter of fact, have been involved in the preparation and they will also participate, you know, in the, in the conference. And in your view, uh, what are the new challenges for this conference? Talking about the challenges, there are a lot. So member states already have highlighted the number of challenges for priority attentions. The combination of comments uh, to the zero draft, you know, the zero draft, that means the first draft you know, for negotiations, now indicates based on zero draft, we sought the views of all stakeholders, including governments and NGOs. Now, based on their contributions, we come up produced under the combination. The combination of comments to the zero draft now indicates some 25 priority areas. The most prominent of those priority areas are the following. Number one, green jobs, decent work and social inclusion. Number two, food security and sustainable agriculture. Number three, sustainable energy for all. Number four, water access and efficiency. Number five, sustainable cities or sustainable urbanization. Number six, oceans. Some people call the blue economy. And number seven is disaster risk reduction and the resi resilience. Of course, you know, we need to and we must address the issue of sustainable production and consumption. As the conference secretary general, what personally do you expect to come out of this conference? That is a political outcome, as I said earlier, you know, focused political outcome. And the second one is a compendium of, let me emphasize the word, measurable, accountable, voluntary commitments and initiatives. So those should be two outcomes. One of the two themes of the summit is to promote green economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication so that it can fit in small island states, least developed countries and developing countries. When we began the preparations, 
you know, the countries, many countries, particularly developing countries, have serious concerns about the definition of a green economy. And that's why they put the word after the green economy. Green economy in the context of sustainable development and poverty eradication. But still, with this addition for the theme, they still have concerns. So what's the definition? What do you mean by green economy? You know, what, does, what does it imply for us? What is going to increase our problems? You know, they have th the, uh, I think they have three major concerns. Number one, the transition cost of the green economy. It's real. It's a real problem, concern. Second, they are really concerned that the green economy could be misused by s some of the other stakeholders as a weapon for trade protectionism. They're called green trade barriers. Number three concern is that they are worried that with the green economy, many developed countries will, of course, uh, come up with the indicators, the targets, and uh, all those, all those sort of things. And that could be used as a conditionality for official development assistance. Those are three concerns of developing countries. So, if the real prosperity is going to succeed. I think we must address those concerns. The conference will also strengthen arrangements and mechanisms that integrate sustainable development goals at the international, national, and local levels. At the national and local level, this could mean strengthening those institutions involved in ensuring access to clean water, sanitation, shelter, energy, etc. You know, since I'm still on this, uh, on this subject, I think I, as a Chinese national, I'm very happy you know, as a baby of the Rio Plus 20 China established a commission for economic reform and development, which is actually a kind of institution, very strong institution at a national level. You know, they are coordinating all the economic, social and environmental protections, you know, those matters. So, mere abstract discussions on institutions will not suffice. So our aim must be to make governance fit to deliver our development. Xia, a veteran Chinese diplomat who also heads the United Nations Department of Economics and Social Affairs, says he embraces the challenges that come with leading Royal Plus 20, but won't accept a failed outcome of the conference. Failure is not option, because we cannot afford to fail. China Daily reporter Zhang Yiwei reporting from the United Nations.